Helping you live healthy this morning, a pulmonary embolism can turn deadly if it's not treated. It affects an estimated one in 1,000 people here in the United States every year. And if you're traveling long distances this summer, you could be putting yourself at a higher risk of developing it. Joining me now to explain the signs, the symptoms, treatment is Memorial Critical Care Physician Dr. Renato Blanco. Good morning. Thank you Good for morning. being here. My pleasure. So what is pulmonary embolism? So basically, if you think about it, blood is constantly flowing throughout your body. Mm. It goes to the heart, to all the organs, and it comes right back. When the blood flow coming back is slowed, whether it's you have weak vessels or whether you're not moving as much as you should, sometimes these clots can form. A lot of times they start in your legs because of gravity, and the biggest concern that we have is if one of these clots gets dislodged, they end up in your lungs. So what causes then that to happen? So we we're talking about long flights. That might. I'm so it's really your risk problem. factors, right? Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, there's some that we have no control over, but there's some that we do have control over. One of the risk factors is age. Usually over 40 years old, you're at higher risk. But there's over also over 40. Yes, ma'am. That's young. It's quite. quite <laughs> I young. assumed that this was maybe so yes. in the elderly category. <laughs> <laughs> Even young patients can get pulmonary okay, embolism. Okay. All right. So, correct. But smoking, mm -hmm. obesity, and like we had mentioned, long travel. The big magic number that we usually use is about four hours, and you're concerned. And is that because they're sitting in the same position and Correct. not getting up to walk around? So Correct. then it, should somebody have those risk factors as an example and is getting ready to maybe fly abroad and is going to be on a plane for more than four hours, what can, is there something that they can do to kind of reduce their risk of developing one? Of course. So one of the big things is stay hydrated, right? Also, you want to, exactly like you said, get up, move around. You could do a little ankle exercises, stretch your calves a little bit. And that's always a good thing. And is there a particular part then of the leg, it sounds like, that this most occurs where it's, you mentioned moving the ankle. Is that enough? Or a lot is of times it literally it's your getting up? So it's your calves. I mean, it doesn't hurt to move, to move around yeah. if, they, if they allow you on the plane, of course. But yeah. So, and then can you feel this happening? You know, are, are there some symptoms that maybe this has occurred and you feel these symptoms later and you can get treatment? Sure. So as far as DVTs, what you'll notice is that you may have some swelling in your leg, some redness, maybe some warmth, and sometimes pain. And if you have the complication of a pulmonary embolism, then what you would expect, some chest pain, shortness of breath, sometimes people feel lightheaded, and some people even pass out. So it's interesting because I wouldn't necessarily associate maybe a clot in the leg with having trouble breathing. What is it then that causes that? It's because there's slowed blood then to other parts of the body? Yes, yeah, so it gets dislodged, and, that's oh. when it, and then it travels its way up to the lungs. So um, is, is, is there any reason other than long flights that this might develop, uh, assuming that you don't have all of these risk factors, other things that maybe we do in our life that we need to be cognizant of? Because I think about how long I sit at my desk. Maybe yeah. I need to get up more often and walk well, around. It's true. Well, it's true. It's always a good thing to get your steps in, walk around, exercise, don't smoke. So this risk factors. And then by the dislodging, can that lead to other things like stroke? Usually not. Okay. But because you have to have a, different, a connection between different parts of your heart that would cause you to have a stroke. So are there any final words then that you would have for any of our viewers who maybe fit into this category in terms of, of you know, preventing something like this from happening? Yeah, well, you just know the risk factors and then prevent what you can. Don't smoke. Stay active. Stay mobile. If you're planning on a long trip, then make sure that you're hydrated. Take breaks. Stretch out. If you're like me and you jam out when you're traveling, make sure you're moving your legs a little bit. You know, drop a little two-step if you need to. Yeah. But... Hopefully, if you could prevent it, that you don't have to come see me in the ICU. And then deep vein thrombosis, yes, are there, is that, that is similar to this because it can lead to a pulmonary embolism? Correct, because you'll have the clot in your leg, and if it gets dislodged, it would make its way up to the lungs. And then that's what that is. What about those compression hose that I've seen before? Are those a good idea for someone who has these risk factors? Yes, if you, do have, if you do have risk factors, then yes, it, is, it could benefit you, correct. So always good then to talk to your internal medicine or your, or, or, you know, your doctor about before Correct. these kinds of trips. Yes, always see your primary physician. You don't want to see me because I'm the intensivist. <laughs> right. But if you do you make your... You don't want to get to the point where we Correct. need to see you, right? But if you do make your way to me, then my team at Memorial would love to take care of you. <laughs> okay, that's very sweet. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate sure, my pleasure. you being here and for the information. Of course, if you missed any of this, uh, don't worry. We're going to post the entire interview later this morning on newsforjax.com. Just look under the Live Healthy section.